the garden of Snowy Village. Lazy and frivolous, with a neck for making tons of jokes, he has no interest in capturing humans, much to the chagrin of his brother, Papyrus. Despite his exceedingly late back attitude and status as the easiest enemy, Zeds has proven himself to be extremely servant and dangerous, and he pushed too far to come to the final challenge to the station and the canvas have been regarded to bring the forces to the game. He also had a suspicion of risk from the start, originally planned on eliminating the Malion in the game, but Tori forced him to make a promise that he would do so. Sans is stated to be the easiest enemy to the having one HDK, although he's still slumbered in a twist with zero HDK and minimal determination, he can survive Hopkins' absolutely normal attack, an attack he created that can generate the kinetic energy of 87 point six new territories of TLT, making him what he comes to his own level. At eyes, Tron is stated that he has to accept your exit fight with Sans, this Tron, but it has been something like that. So it has to have been Votasta Fly, needed to be a slugger than Votasta Fly, who is capable of destroying the save file, which can be argued the whole Undertale game of the creates it right after it becomes their saving, and welcomes the saving world, which is a fifth dimensional world. He treats it as a game of the world, since he can hit you out of the first last game he would have to do in a fiction of the same verse, making him run on flex multiversal level. Sans can dodge twist, who, with enough determination, is also able to move your soul around, despite their body being frozen, by Asriel Fever, in his angel of death form, and is able to keep on par with your top of the fly, who is capable of switching around timelines, while being completely ineffective to himself. So Tosca Fly is also likely superior to Clara, who was still able to freely move after destroying every existing timeline, making him measured. Most of his HDK and DDF have the value of 1, making him more durable than a frisk, with zero DDF and minimal determination, but this is contradictory to prove he's actually able to last a brief period of time after a DDF by a devastating attack for a frisk. So, Sans' true durability is unknown, since it's pretty difficult to pinpoint. While Sans is lazy, he has demonstrated incredible skill and proficiency in cybers and physics. Sans is so perceptive that he can accurately reduce how many times Kara has tried him to try to enter the time travel test by looking at their expression. Most notably, Sans seems to possess knowledge of the SATD system as he left reports that show the activity of a multitude of timelines. These reports may even reveal what will happen to the timeline by the end of the genocide route, which is total destruction. Actions cause the judge to begin to view his quest in a more serious light. The judge, also known as Katla, is Zone Zero's guardian, a lazy and intelligent cat. He 
Alright viewers, now that the prey analysis is done, let us get into who wins this fight and why. So as we can see here, Sands is far superior to the Shed in almost every category. The best way for the Shed to win is to get Sands to tire out of his land the tower so hit on him. However, he needs to land a hit and one thing Sands is good at his dodging. So the Shed isn't going to land any of his spells to be stuck in. Let's also not forget Sands' ability to remove any of his ability from the Shed's Sands to pay a R M A. So in summary, Sands wins the other Far faster, more powerful, and his abilities need to be up for the rest of the game. Next time on Total Fight Time. 